The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. Hello, this is Johanna Kern. Welcome to the show that is dedicated to living, loving, and having the most happy, healthy, successful, and abundant life. It is possible to live such life. Yes, it is. And it isn't very difficult to build it. Of course, we need to have the appropriate tools and knowledge to do so. And we are giving you such tools and tips during our shows. Patrick Kern, my husband, accompanies me on this show as usual. Welcome, everyone. I hope you're doing great. We are meeting on air every week at the same time. And now let's have a recap of what happened on our previous shows. Johanna told us that In this show, we don't disregard anybody's preferences or beliefs. We only show you various angles and help you to expand your consciousness. This show is meant for everybody, no matter what is your background, age, gender, belief system, or lack of it. It is important to us that you will understand that. Whether you lean towards scientific theories or philosophical beliefs, the most important thing to remember is this. Life is a journey. Its distance is measured by the beauty of your heart, not by the length of it, not even by how successful you become in it. Your purpose is to constantly evolve and experience yourself. Only we can decide which route we want to choose, what we want to experience on our journey, where we want to arrive, and in whose company. Remember, you are worth living the most wonderful life. We don't need to be stuck in a stream of circumstances and perpetuate what's no longer satisfying. Contrary to some beliefs, our destiny is not a fixed thing. It doesn't take hard work or struggle to change what we want. We also learned how we create our reality with our thoughts. From Einstein, Tesla and other scientists such as Peter Higgs and Francois Englert who received the Nobel Prize in 2013. We know that everything that exists is simply energy. That includes all that is material, measurable by our senses, and all that we can only perceive, our thoughts, emotions, or electrons. Did you know that nobody ever has seen or weighed an electron? Everything being a part of one huge energy field vibrates, including our thoughts. They behave like radio waves. Just like with radio waves, the frequency of vibrations of our thoughts determines their quality and outreach. And just like with radio waves, our thoughts are being sent out to reach, well, whatever they can reach. And what they can reach depends on the frequency of their vibrations. And that decides how our thinking affects the reality, or rather the illusion, that we create and co-create, whether we are aware of it or not. According to recent developments in science, the structure of the universe with all its laws and forces implies that intelligence existed prior to matter. And only because people identify with their body, they believe that when their body perishes, their consciousness will too. Consciousness is what it is, a vibration, a current, 
a signal. Not long ago, the medical field talked about consciousness as being related to our senses. There is even an existing term we use when someone faints. We say then that the person is unconscious. However, now, as we can see, we need to make a difference between the consciousness of our senses and the consciousness that we are, beyond our senses, not being limited to our body. And that is the consciousness we talk about during our shows. We also compare the latest discoveries in science with what some of the many philosophical or religious beliefs have been saying about infinity. While science talks about everything being a part of one huge energy field, many belief systems talk about God being all there is and containing everything within. No matter whether it is science or a belief system that resonates the most with our own inner truth, some things remain the same. We are all part of one whole, and we are all connected. And you know what? It might be that what resonates with you is the scientific approach, or it might be that you are more drawn to a spiritual or religious belief. It is important to remember that there is no right or wrong answer. There is no better or worse approach. All that you believe or think about what's true to you is valid, real, and most important for you. Our show is dedicated to living, loving, and having the happiest, healthy, successful, and abundant life. It is easy to get used to any situation we are in, and it is more difficult to welcome change and step into uncertain ground. Yet, it can be done. As a matter of fact, it has been done by many others that you might admire and even envy their successful and happy lives. And Johanna told us that when your life does not unfold in an easy way, when you are going through hardship, it is a sign of your own inner truth, not being in harmony with what you are doing with your life. It does not mean that you are doing something wrong. Oh no, you can't ever be wrong about your life. It is your life, you are living it the best way you can at any given moment, and you and only you decide how and what you want to experience. Trust your own process, despite setbacks, delays, or any obstacles on your way, or discouragement from anybody who doesn't believe in you. Trust yourself and trust your life. Don't ever give up on who you are becoming and trust your inner wisdom. We tend to think of ourselves in superficial ways. We judge how we look, we judge how we behave, we judge how we perform our tasks, how much money we make, what we know, who we know, what we wear, what we drive, where we live. But we rarely ask ourselves what is truly important to us. That is until we hit a roadblock that makes us stop and realize that we were blindly moving forward not knowing where we were going. All we wanted was to feel safe, to matter, to be acknowledged. And that need was never satisfied. Whatever we did, there was always something missing, lacking. But we kept going on anyway, because everyone else did that. And so we didn't question anything, thinking that if all people we know were living that way, then it must be right. As a society, we have been programmed 
to forget who we really are, to numb ourselves with whatever we can, shopping for often useless things, compulsively watching TV, overeating, overdosing, drinking too much, dating the wrong people, playing too much video games, gambling, clubbing, anything that lets us not think, not listen to ourselves, not cherish who we are. Next time, when you experience a setback in your life, stop and try to find out what it is truly about. It may have nothing to do with you not getting the job you wanted. It may have nothing to do with what you wanted to achieve or who you wanted to meet or date. Instead, it might be your own heart telling you that the life you live is not what you want. When I talk about your heart, I mean the essence of who you are, the core, the real you, not your subconscious filled with your fears, not your mind limited by anybody's point of view, not your personality shaped and conditioned in response to what society expects from you, not your background, your religion or belief system, but the honest and real you. You are unique, one among billions, and so is your life story. Make it truly yours. You have the power to do that. You are a powerful creator, and you can influence your reality with your thoughts. We know it already from quantum physics. And if you haven't noticed that yet, sooner or later, you too will learn that that's the way it is. Your life can be entirely the way you want it. We also gave you the next step in the game, Nine Pennies Can Change Your Life, a game that can help you change any life situation and achieve anything you want. We will give you the next step in that game later today, but now, Let's talk about our next topic, how to stop the hardship in our life and be in tune with the flow of life. What does it take to live a life that supports who we are instead of beating us up this way or another? I also invite you to visit my blog on my official site www.johannakern.com where I write, among other things, about how to overcome our subconscious fears, maintain our happiness in life despite stressful situations, and live the life we want. We talk about such and other topics during our shows in more details, and I answer some of the questions sent to me by listeners and readers in the later part of each show. I will do so today, as usual. Thank you for sending me your questions. And, as usual, you will all remain anonymous. Your identity will not be revealed. Those of you who would like to send me your questions and get an answer on air can email me at radio at johannakern.com After the break, we'll talk about what to do to stop all the struggling and hardship in our life and live the truth of our heart. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. Let's talk about what many of us wonder and ponder about. How to stop perpetuating struggling and hardship and be in tune with the flow of life. How to live with ease, living the life we are meant to live, happy, healthy, fulfilling, and comfortable. When we are small children, before we learn from others that their happiness depends on anything else but their innate joy of life, we are naturally happy. Small children, unless hungry, ill or hurt in any way. 
usually wake up smiling and welcome each day with natural curiosity and passion. Then, step by step, their environment begins to change their point of view, imprinting in them a set of conditions, rules, expectations, and demands. The child quickly learns that if he, she, does not comply, the appreciation for the child, or even sometimes love, is withdrawn. Together with the set of rules how to behave, what's good, what's wrong, what's desirable, and what's despicable, comes a set of labels. You are good, you are bad, you are black, you are white, you're a boy, a girl, you're awful, short, small, too young, too old, too skinny, too fat, too dumb, too stupid. In other words, do as I told you, be as I told you. You are not good enough, and I am better than you. What happens next? Of course, we begin to believe that we are not allowed to be who we are because we are not good enough, and that we are not worthy of having the life we want, that is happy, healthy, fulfilled, and, at least in some way, comfortable, if not wealthy. We all want to live such life, and only the details vary from person to person, depending on our preferences, talents, passions, or interests. And although we often have many opportunities to build such life, we either don't follow them, not believing in ourselves, or, equally often, we don't recognize such opportunities because we don't trust ourselves anymore. It is because we have learned to blindly follow the priorities imprinted in our subconscious by our environment, either by our family or teachers, the society, or a belief system we had acquired by the default, because it dominates in the parts of the world we live in, or the times we live in. What's more, we have been trained to wish for certain things, things that most of people around us had been trained to wish for, a better job, a better car, a nice house, a certain type of a relationship, more money, more of this, and more of that. And do you know what wishing for all those things truly means? It means that it is change that we are truly after. Behind every wish, there is a subconscious need for a change in life. Not really for the new job or a car or a house, which are also important. In the end, when we get the things we want, we will still wish for something else. And that's because what we truly want is a real change. A change that will change how we live. Not what we have, but how we feel about ourselves and our life. That's what it is about, being who we are and living the way we want. How do we find out who we are? To begin with, we need to take off all the labels given us by society and which we accepted as truth about ourselves. The first step is to learn how to be with ourselves alone for not less than 20 to 30 minutes a day. Yes, turn off that TV, leave that bar, club, or a party earlier, or go to it later. Stop working, overeating, playing video games, or whatever it is you are doing to escape the feeling of emptiness. Spend some time with yourself. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, and hold on to the moment of stillness and silence.
Now imagine your world according to your heart, not according to the noise of your mind, the conditioning of your past, your fear of life, or what drives your ego. Imagine your world the way you feel it, deep inside your heart. The world according to your heart is the reality you truly want and need to create for yourself if you want to remain happy, reach fulfillment, and continue to progress as the consciousness that you are. You can find out more about the consciousness by listening to our first radio show. You can find it in our archives for January 2016 shows on my official site. For the purpose of this teaching, I use the word heart to describe the core of your essence, your pure inner person, the part of you where you hold your own beautiful truth, free of any conditioning and fears. Your heart, as explained in this way, holds all the truths that are important for you and your evolution. As such, it knows well what you need to experience in life, what will most benefit your progress, when and where you need to go. If you carefully look at your life, past and present, you might depict exactly the times when you have been living according to your heart and when you have forsaken your own truth. When you live your life according to the vision of your heart, you feel happy for no reason at all, but just because you enjoy each moment. There is no mistake about that. We all know inside what real happiness means. It can't be faked. Our inner barometer of truth is always present and alert. It tells us when we live according to our heart and when we divert from our own truth. What happens if we don't follow the truth of our heart? It's not only that we will feel a lack of happiness and purpose in our life. It's not only that our reality feels more like a burden than a playground for our joy. It's a life of struggle, whether inner struggle and stress or problems piling on our path, obstacles, delays, misfortunes, any possible roadblocks that make us stop in our tracks. When we live against what's in our heart, we experience a life of short-lived success. It could be that we are failing in private life, in our relationships, family, or at work, where we cannot achieve lasting success. We keep losing our jobs or capital. We feel emptiness and fear as a drive to achieve more materially instead of reaching for our dream job, doing what we truly love, thriving emotionally and physically. Your life reflects the state of your heart. Remember, your heart and your life are communicating vessels. Happy life equals happy heart. Happy heart equals happy life. It's simple math, and we know it. Where to start? Free your mind of past conditioning and trust your heart. It knows well what's best for you. Don't be afraid of life. It's just life, a natural process, which may be harmonious and joyous if you allow it. There is a simple solution for happiness in life. Replace your head mind desires with your heart-driven ones. Step 2. Make a commitment to yourself and let your word be the most important asset you have. Treat it like gold and it will bring you gold. Each time you do what you say, you train yourself to be reliable. Then you will be able to create what you want in the world. Don't be afraid of your heart. 
the vision of your heart is bigger than your fears. It is bigger than your conditioned mind's vision and bigger than your subconsciously programmed vision of yourself. When you trust your heart, you will find out what you're capable of, what's your purpose, and what it is that you truly want and need to bring to the world. Step 3. Pay attention to the opportunities on your path. You don't have to analyze everything to pieces. Once you get in tune with your inner truth, you can trust your heart. Follow it, and there'll be no mistakes. Everything will align with who you are and what you need to live the life you want. The people you meet, the news you hear, maybe you lose a job that not supports who you are and will get a more suitable one for your needs. Maybe you'll move to a new place or continue your education. Things in your life will shift to help you become who you are meant to be and all you need is to be in the flow and enjoy the ease of your life. The unique true vision of your heart is needed and welcome to shine in the world to make it a better place for you and for all of us. Don't lose the opportunity to be yourself. You are a beautiful human being with your own story to tell. Say it well and say it with ease. I would like you to relax now and repeat after me a very useful affirmation. We have been repeating this affirmation for a few weeks now. The affirmation comes from my book 365 plus 1 Affirmations to Create a Great Life and goes as follows. I let go of my worries. I know life will support me if I fully embrace my own worth. I am a unique human being, one in billions, with my own story to tell in this life. I let my story unfold without fear of the future. I trust my own process. I trust that all is happening for my best. Excellent! Well done! As we remember, it is important to repeat such positive statements so that we can rewire our brain and affect our subconscious. When we are changing our thinking to be more positive, one of the most important things is repetition. Repetition as well as appropriate environment and timing for using positive statements are needed in order for our subconscious to accept our message. Our shows provide such positive environment for our subconscious. We will repeat this affirmation at the end of the show during our usual short relaxation routine in which I am guiding you to help you in the process of reprogramming your subconscious. I will be giving you more useful tips during our shows to help you change what you need to change to build and live the life you want. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. I will answer some of your questions related to our today's topic. How to stop struggling and hardship in our life and be in tune with the flow of life. How to live a life that supports us. 
how to recognize the opportunities on our path and follow our heart. You will of course remain anonymous. If you want your question answered on air, you can safely send me an email to this address, radio at johannakern.com. This question is from Susan. My life seems to have become a tale of missed opportunities. I have wasted every possible chance so far. I am in my early 30s and I've been going backwards for many years. I never really had many close friends and I've never had a real relationship. I have a good family home. My parents are hard-working people who've made a successful life for them and me and my siblings. When I finished college, I had a very good job for a while and I was earning very good money. That came to an end. I have not worked much in the past four years. I've only had part-time jobs here and there. I still live with my parents, and still have no one significant in my life, and still don't know what I've done wrong. Susan, as I was listening to your question, I couldn't help but notice that your life is perhaps not so much a tale of missed opportunities, but it is a tale of missing one the most important opportunity, finding out what is your own truth, who you truly are, what are you about, what are your interests, and how you would like to live your life. It seems to me that you went to school, had a job, Yes, it was a well-paid job. However, you're not talking much about whether it was in alignment with your interests or not. It seems to me that the biggest problem in your life are not the missed opportunities, but the emptiness, the emptiness that fills your life. The first thing you need to do to live the life you want is to find out who you are And what is the life you want to live? You need to get in tune with your inner truth. And after that, your heart will lead you on your way. The opportunities that lead us to a better life tend to be in alignment with what's most important for us, with our preferences, our passions. But they never look 100% perfect. There is no promise of no obstacles to overcome. Opportunities do not come gift-wrapped, yet they make us feel at ease when we think about following them. When your heart tells you that any given opportunity is in tune with who you really are, then the opportunity is right for you. However, make sure that you don't just respond to your subconscious fears or to your ego drives. If it seems to be that case, the opportunity that presents itself on your path is not an opportunity, but a detour. Detours can be valuable as well, and we might learn this or that about ourselves. Sometimes we need that. However, it is not an opportunity that is in alignment with our heart. Susan, this is something that you very sincerely need to think about. And if you want your life to be happy, you truly, I can't stress it enough, you truly have to find out what's in your heart. Let me tell you further how to recognize a good opportunity. Regardless of some obstacles and imperfections, great opportunities are usually transparent. And as I stressed, already a few times, in alignment with who we are. We can see clearly that they lead us where we want to go in a way that agrees with either what we know how to do best, or we are skillful at doing, passionate about, or willing to learn, since such opportunities are also in alignment with our interests. Now, please notice this as well. If an opportunity seems very lucrative and not in alignment with who we are, it's not good for us. It will become either our detour or 
another roadblock on our path. Pay attention and make sure that the opportunity is really an opportunity, not our idea of what an opportunity should look like or the wish of our ego for a situation to be an opportunity. When you can't sing and someone offers you a singing lucrative job, it isn't a good opportunity. Or if you are desperate to get rich quickly, but have no previous knowledge of how to safely invest. Do not invest your savings into something that seems to be too good to be true. If it looks that way, it usually is. Also, look at how the situation relates to your present, what it means to you today, not what it will mean to you in a few years. What's in your heart today is the most important thing. You don't know how you will change. You only know who you are today. Make sure not to judge the opportunity through the prism of your past failures. If something didn't work before, it doesn't mean it won't work again. You have evolved. You are at a different place today than you were before. Don't think about failing. Trust yourself and walk ahead, even if you don't see clearly the way. Timing can be everything. You need to be sure that this is what will serve you today. You made a decision to make changes in your life, that's good. But don't forget that starting too early, when you are still carrying the old luggage from the past, may not let you to continue on your way. Free yourself from what weighs you down. Don't jump ahead when you are not ready. Take off all the labels and get in tune with what's in your heart. And this is what you need to do, Susan. Don't look for opportunities before you find out who you are, before you get rid of the luggage from the past and be ready to start living the life you want. Once you know what you want, your life will support you. I wish you all the very best on your way. Good luck, Susan. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. The next question is from Paul. I regret not getting an education when I should have. I dropped out and went traveling around the world at 18. I was working as a dishwasher for nine years to support myself and didn't think much about my future. I saw some amazing things, but now I'm back in my town and it's time to decide what's next. I've realized that making my own decisions is more important than making the right decisions. I want to go back to school but I don't know if I can manage while still holding a job. I'm staying with my grandparents, and they encourage me to study, even offered to pay for the school. I know that life is hard enough for them. They've raised me and my brother after our parents died in a car crash, and I will always be grateful to them. Back then, when I dropped out of school, my grandparents were still working. Now they are both retired, and they have a small fixed income. What should I do? Mm. Don't regret what you have done or what you have not done. Regrets lead us nowhere. You have lived your life. It was your life experience. And you made your own decisions. It doesn't matter whether you think today that they were right or not. They were your own decisions indeed. And you have proved to yourself that you can live the life you want and you did your best so far remember also that it is never too late to start fresh when we are following our heart no work seems to be too hard when you are making your next step again choose from your heart that way you will have enough energy and strength to go back to school and to be able to manage 
any part-time job you will have in the meantime, yes, you will be able to do it. You worked as a dishwasher for nine years. That's a very hard job and also low paid. And you survived. You seem to be happy with your life. You are just ready for the next stage in your life. Under the pressure of society, you may think that you made a mistake, that you didn't finish your education at the proper time. I don't believe so. I believe that you did what was right for you. Now, the question of supporting yourself and not being a burden to your grandparents, they have done enough for you and for your brother. If you are able to stay with them until you finish your education, but not asking them to support you in any other way, especially not in a financial way, then that is by all means okay and that will be easier on you, and they also will be happy to contribute to your life. Find a part-time job. Find out what you would like to study the most in your life, and you know what? Go for it. You are a very strong person. You are a winner. You can do it. You can finish any school you want if you put your mind to it. You are a very intelligent person. You are alert. You live consciously your life. That's huge for someone who started so early at only 18. Don't let anyone or anything distract you from your way to the life you want. You already have the life you wanted. Now you want a different one. And that's okay. We change. Things have changed. It's been nine years. You've done great so far. And you will do Great. I keep my fingers crossed for you and applaud you for having the courage to live the life you want. And although it wasn't easy, it was exactly the way you wanted. And you know what? There are no guarantees in life. Empires crash overnight. There is no guarantee that we ever will be safe. We're looking for the wrong reasons when we are designing our life paths. You have done well. I wish you all the very best. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. And now it's time for the next step in our game. Nine pennies can change your life. Step five. Put one IP in your BLA. Now you will be able to recognize an opportunity as it presents itself to you. Often on our road, a sudden unexpected event or a new situation occurs. It is important to recognize such a moment and trust our intuition instead of reasoning and making mental assumptions. If we feel it may lead us to our goal, it probably will. If we try to assess things mentally at this point, we will end up in a vicious circle of controlling and failing again. Only our heart knows what we need. Our mind has been patterned by our past and so it can make mistakes. Following one's heart through intuitive action has no place for logic or mind control. Your fifth IP gets you the power to know the difference. Your time limit is one week till our next show. Reference. In our story, the younger brother stepped into the greenery without hesitation. He couldn't know what he would find there. Yet he decided to listen to his intuition and took the risk. He was rewarded for his dedication to his heart, and he found a hidden path inside the bushes. Follow your heart and listen to your intuition. Have fun with it. If you don't remember the story in the game or how to do the fifth step, you can simply go to my official website www.johannacurn.com and find the Nine Pennies Can Change Your Life game 
on my blog. We are adding there the next steps in the game after each show. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. And now it is time for our usual short relaxation. I will be guiding you now to repeat some affirmations to help you to reprogram your subconscious and deal with your subconscious fears. The affirmations come from my book, 365 plus 1, Affirmations to Create a Great Life. The book contains a step-by-step program which I designed based on many years of experience in counseling people to help them achieve what they wanted the most. There are also some CDs that I recorded which can be listened to in a state of a deep relaxation while I am guiding the listeners through the process of reprogramming your subconscious. Such tools as those are very effective and you can find on the market whatever will suit your preferences and needs. As we already know, it is very important to deal with our subconscious programming while we are changing our thoughts to be more positive so that we could create the life we want. And now I'd like you to relax and listen to the following. Find a comfortable position, sitting or lying down. Close your eyes and let your arms rest alongside your body. Good. Now take a deep breath and slowly let it out. Take another deep breath and again slowly let it out. Then, while taking in the next breath, let it fill you up from toes to head and add an image to it, a pleasant dim light glowing everywhere inside you. Keep breathing and observing the light inside from the count of ten Two, one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Two, one. Relax and let the dim light inside shine in every single cell in your body. Good. In order to reprogram your subconscious for the life you want, you need to learn how to replace your negative thinking with positive thoughts. Your life is not your enemy. Your life is your loyal friend. Acknowledge it. Appreciate it. You are worth living the most wonderful life. Repeat after me in your mind. I let go of my worries. I know life will support me. If I fully embrace my own worth, I am a unique human being, one in billions, with my own story to tell in this life. I let my story unfold 
without fear of the future. I trust my own process. I trust that all is happening for my best. Good. Well done. Remember, the life you want on the subconscious level is already yours. And now you will learn how to access it so that you can start living it in your day-to-day reality. You have learned a lot from your past and now you can be free from it. Any hardship you have experienced has only made you stronger, wiser and more compassionate. Repeat in your mind, I will treasure what I have learned through suffering and struggling as a good lesson about who I am. I know that I am powerful. I know that I can trust and respect myself. I completely release my past and live in the now. Well done. You can move forward now in your life. The life you want can be yours. Make it your reality. Enjoy it and love it. You are a powerful creator and you will get what you want and live the life you want. Now you can open your eyes at the count of one to five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. Excellent. You've done very well. You are fully relaxed yet energized and happy to continue with your day. Thank you for participating. In the next show, we will talk more about what we can do to live the life we want, how to overcome our fears or obstacles, and I will respond to more of your questions without revealing your name. Please send your questions to this email address, radio at johannakern.com. I wish you a wonderful week, till we meet again at the same time. See you next week. Have a good one. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern.